If you drive a Toyota, Honda, Subaru, or Nissan in the U.S., there's a very high chance your owner's manual says one thing, loud and clear. Use Zero W20 full synthetic only. No debate, no alternatives. Sounds final, right? Now here's where it gets uncomfortable. That exact same engine, same casting, same internals, same part numbers, sold in Japan, Europe, Australia, or the Middle East, often recommends 5W30, sometimes even 10W30. So pause for a second. Did the metal magically change when the car crossed an ocean? Or did something else decide what oil Americans are told to use? Because that tiny number on the bottle isn't just about fuel economy. It can mean the difference between an engine that quietly lasts 250,000 miles or one that slowly wears itself out long before that. And as you watch this, keep one question in your head. What oil is in your engine right now? And who really chose it? Let's talk about what's actually going on. Manufacturers will tell you Zero W20 is about modern engineering, tight tolerances, and advanced materials. And that's partly true. Modern engines are built more precisely than older ones. Thin oil flows fast on cold starts and helps reduce friction. That matters. But here's the part they don't emphasize. In the United States, automakers live and die by fuel economy regulations. Even a fraction of an MPG can mean millions of dollars in fines. So when a car goes through EPA testing, every small advantage counts. Thinner oil creates less internal drag. Less drag means slightly better fuel economy on the test. That's why Zero W20 is gold for manufacturers. It helps them pass a government test one time in that car's life. But your engine doesn't live on a test bench. It lives in traffic, heat, long highway runs, stop-and-go summers, and years of wear. And that's where priorities start to change. Outside the U.S., fuel economy rules are often less aggressive. Longevity matters more. So suddenly, the same engines are approved for thicker oils that hold their protective film better when hot. Not because engineers forgot physics in America, but because paperwork decides the recommendation here. Now let's clear up a huge misconception. The zero W part doesn't mean better protection when hot. It only describes how the oil flows when cold. At operating temperature, a zero W20 is still a 20 weight oil, and that's the real issue. A 20 weight oil is thin when the engine is hot. That's great for efficiency, but a 30 weight oil maintains a thicker film between bearings, cam lobes, piston rings, and turbo shafts under heat and load. That film is what prevents metal to metal contact. When engines are brand new, that thinner film can be enough. Clearances are tight, parts are fresh, but engines don't stay new. As mileage climbs, clearances grow. Bearings wear, rings lose tension, timing chains stretch, and that thin oil that worked fine at 30,000 miles may be barely holding on at 120,000. That's why so many independent mechanics quietly recommend stepping up to 5W30 as engines age, especially in warmer climates. And let's talk about climate, because this matters more than people realize. Most Americans don't live in sub-zero winters year-round. They live in places where summer heat is brutal. Texas, Arizona, Florida, California. Oil temperatures in modern cars can easily hit 230 degrees in traffic or on long highway drives. At those temperatures, many zero W20 oils shear down faster. They thin out sooner. Oil analysis repeatedly shows that in hot, high-load driving, Zero W20 often falls out of grade well before a normal oil change interval. A good 5W30 holds its viscosity longer and protects better under the same conditions. That's exactly why the same engines in hotter global markets are paired with thicker oil. Heat, not cold, is what destroys engines over time. So, here's the uncomfortable truth. The oil listed in your U.S. owner's manual isn't always the oil engineers would choose if fuel economy testing didn't exist. 
Once a car is certified with a specific oil, changing that recommendation would require expensive recertification, so the manual stays frozen, even if real-world conditions say otherwise. That's also why you'll see carefully worded lines like, if 0W20 is unavailable, 5W30 may be used temporarily. That's not engineering advice, that's legal language. Now, what about warranty? This scares a lot of people. Using 5W30 does not automatically void your warranty. Under US law, a manufacturer must prove the oil caused the failure. If you're using a quality synthetic that meets required specifications, they can't just deny coverage because the number on the bottle is different. And here's something most people never hear. Ask dealership technicians what oil they use in their own cars. The answer is often very different from what they put in customers' cars. Many run 5W30 once their vehicles have some miles on them. They see wear patterns every day. They trust physics more than marketing. None of this means 0W20 is bad. In cold climates, short trips, newer engines, and gentle driving, it works fine. But for hot climates, high mileage, turbos, long highway runs, or anyone planning to keep their car for the long haul, stepping up to 5W30 can be one of the cheapest forms of insurance you'll ever buy. The same engine that runs safely on thicker oil overseas isn't suddenly fragile in America. You're not breaking the engine by thinking past the label. You're thinking like an engineer instead of a regulator. So now I want to hear from you. What oil are you running right now and where do you drive? Drop it in the comments. I read them and the patterns are fascinating. If this changed the way you think about oil, hit like, subscribe, and stay tuned because sometimes the smallest decisions are the ones that quietly decide how long your engine really lives.